The second part of today's presentation is about go-around performance. Before we go a little bit further into the actual calculations, I would like to bring in a little bit of theory and understanding about the procedure itself. What is the difference between a go-around procedure and a discontinued approach? Well, as part of your procedure training, this should be very familiar to you. It has to do with whether or not the aircraft has physically started its final descent from the platform altitude down to and towards the missed approach point. They are not the same, they are not carried out the same. A discontinued approach means that the aircraft has not yet started its final descent down for the missed approach point. You're currently at or above the FCU selected altitude, the altitude in your window. And the approach has not been activated and is therefore not part of the flight management system yet. When we talked about the flight management system and auto flight, we talked about this particular procedure about setting in the FCU altitude above going above and below. When we come in for an approach and we clear it for the approach, then we arm the approach for capture. It means the aircraft will go in, it will then first capture the lateral and when over the final approach fix right here, will start its descent. The aircraft will, until that point, maintain the FCU selected altitude up in the window. But once it starts descending, it's going below that altitude. If you have to abort an approach before you go below that FCU selected altitude, you do not need to initiate a go-around procedure per se. Therefore, you do not need to apply full power. You do not need to climb and therefore do not necessarily want the excess power. All you have to do is push the approach button if you had armed it already and follow ATC instructions. ATC might want you to follow the missed approach procedure or may give you radar vectors. The latter is probably the most likely case. A discontinued approach should not be a rushed approach. We have plenty of time and we're more than safe where we are. We simply go ahead, disarm the approach, and we then follow ATC instructions as we're at the current altitude. However, if the aircraft has passed the final approach fix here, it means the aircraft has started its descent. It would have intercepted a glide slope or you will have inserted a flight path angle and started descending down on your final approach path right here. But you have now gone below the FCU selected altitude. It is also when we set go around altitude. The aircraft will continue its descent until you take over. Therefore, if we have to abort an approach, then we have to carry out a procedure where we apply power, get back up to safe altitude and follow a specific procedure in terms of lateral flight plan. We perform a go around any time we have gone below the FCU selected altitude. The go around procedure means apply full power, toga power, climb at your initial climb attitude. We must, however, ensure the aircraft climbs at a minimum 2.1% climb gradient. This is for twin engine aircraft and for CAT-1 approach type. It's non-precision and ILS. If we are doing a CAT-2 or CAT-3, we are likely to be closer to the ground and therefore requiring a steeper climb out. So our approach gradient is slightly higher at 2.5%. When we carry out a go-around procedure, we apply toga power. We apply toga power because it sequences the flight management and guidance system to go from approach phase into go-around phase. It tells the aircraft's flight directors to position the nose to a safe climb attitude. It also sequences the flight plan and the active flight plan becomes the go-around procedure and the approach becomes the procedure or the flight plan after the go-around. Speeds, attitude, flight plan, it all changes by that single action of putting the thrust levers to toga. 
whether or not you require the power, you must always hit the token detent on the thrust levers to initiate a go around. It is at the pilot's discretion afterwards to bring the power back if the excess power is not needed for the climb. To meet these climb gradients right here, the assumption is that the aircraft should be able to meet these single engine at the highest weight possible, and that's what we need to be calculating. But also in the worst density conditions, such as hot temperature conditions. A go-around procedure therefore considers single engine performance, torque of power on the remaining engine, gear is up, and the flaps and slats are in approach configuration. With that and that gradient, we should be able to climb out at the highest weight and highest temperature possible. That's what we're going to be calculating. But before I go on to talk about the maximum go around weight, maximum go around temperature, I just want to highlight one thing. Although it's used interchangeably, there is a difference in the definition between a go around procedure and a missed approach procedure. In this aircraft, you are not doing a missed approach procedure. You are following a missed approach procedure. You see, a missed approach procedure is published for that particular approach, runway, and environment, but it's different for every runway and every airport. It is published for any aircraft. Fly runway heading, maintain that, fly to this waypoint, hold at this altitude. That is a missed approach procedure, and we can find them published on the approach charts. The go around procedure, however, is the procedure that you carry out in your specific aircraft to meet that missed approach procedure. A go-around procedure in an Airbus A320 is very different from that in a 737 and is also different from that of an Airbus A380 or a Cessna 172. They may all have to follow the same missed approach procedure, but they each have their own go-around procedure to be able to apply to the conditions for that procedure. And that is the difference between the two. It's more a technical term than anything else. You are going to hear the two missed approach go-around procedure being used interchangeably. When you perform a go-around, the call is go-around flaps. There's a reason why it's not called missed approach flaps. It is a go-around procedure you carry out. This was a short video on a specific topic. If you want to see the full video or see the hundreds of videos we made available for professional content on aviation theory, head on to our e-learning academy at academy.mindspacex.com. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button to follow us. We're going to be putting out these videos regularly.